Dear friends, grace, peace, and mercy be yours this evening and always in God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is drawn from Luke's Gospel. I want to read part of it again. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go, make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Where do you want us to prepare it? They asked. He replied, As you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters, and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room, all furnished. Make preparations there. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. As you may have noticed already, or you certainly will notice as we go on farther in the service, you're going to hear the word or the phrase, the term, Lamb of God, a lot. Every one of our hymns for this evening, save our opening hymn, as Lamb of God in its title in some way. We just sang, The Lamb Goes Uncomplaining Forth, one of the great hymns of all Lutheran hymnody. Awesome hymn. We will sing in communion, The Lamb, very popular, people love it. We will sing Lamb of God, Pure and Holy, another wonderful Lutheran hymn. And we will sing Lamb of God. The proper preface talks about the Paschal Feast, the Feast of the Lamb. We sing the Agnes Day during communion. Literally, the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God is all over this service. In our text for this evening, Jesus tells the disciples, go and make preparations for us eating the Passover Lamb. Passover. That's really where we need to start to understand why we're here this evening commemorating Monday Thursday, commemorating the institution of the Lord's Supper for God's people. We need to start with Passover. But not the Passover of A.D. 30 or 33, depending on what scholar you listen to. We need to talk about the Passover of 1491 B.C., 1,491 years before Jesus took on human flesh and came into the world. The very first Passover. All the way back in Egypt, when God's people were slaves in captivity, and God sent Moses to lead them out of captivity. You remember how that goes? God sent Moses to basically show the Egyptians their false gods were meaningless and powerless compared to the one true God. So he sent the plagues one after another to destroy the idea of the false gods. Finally, because Pharaoh's heart was hardened, God sent the final plague, sent the angel of death to pass throughout all the homes of Egypt and he would kill the firstborn <coughs> every firstborn in the land, all the firstborn children and all the firstborn animals, every firstborn male. But God had a solution for his people, people that would trust in him. He told them, go take a spotless lamb, a lamb without blemish, a lamb without defect. Kill it. Roast it the way I tell you. Take the blood and put the blood on the lintel, the top of the doorpost. Put that lamb's blood there, that blood from that spotless lamb without blemish or defect. And when the angel of the Lord, the angel of death, passes over Egypt, he will pass over that house. He will not take the firstborn son in that house when he sees the blood of the lamb. 1,491 years before Jesus came in human flesh to be our Savior, God gave the Passover the idea of shedding the Lamb's blood and feasting on the Lamb itself 
to his people and he told them every single year, hold this feast in remembrance of what I have done for you. And when your children ask you why we do this and what it's all about, you tell them. You tell them what it means and what I have done to save the people and what I will do to save my people. Fathers were told to explain the Passover to their kids. So what is the Passover? What is it all about? What or who is the Passover lamb? <coughs> What is the spotless Lamb of God that for 1,491 years the people of Israel every <coughs> single year remembered and followed God's instructions as, as they commemorated this Passover? Well, in John chapter 2, verse 29, John the Baptist is standing by the banks of the Jordan River and he sees Jesus coming toward him and he says, For all who would hear, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. You'll hear those words just before you receive the very body and blood of Christ. Jesus is literally the Passover Lamb. The Passover Lamb was never about an animal. It was never about shedding the blood of this Lamb this baby lamb that was spotless and without blemish was never about that. Everything about the Passover, everything about the shedding of the blood and placing the blood on the lintel, the top of the door, was always about Jesus. It was always about what God would do in His true sacrifice of the Lamb of God. And it was always really and totally about the one who would shed his blood on the lintel of the cross for the sins of the world. All who belong to Jesus, all who have been baptized into him, have been washed in his blood. You know, it's a wonderful image in Revelation. Revelation is a book of images, a book of symbolism. But there's a wonderful passage in Revelation chapter 7, verse 19. When St. John is looking at this vision of heaven and he sees all of these people standing before the throne of the Lamb with these wonderful, brilliant white robes on. And John asks the elder standing there with him, who are these people? And he says, sir, you know, these are the ones who have had their robes washed white in the blood of the Lamb. It's a wonderful image that I use in, in Bible studies. Many of you have seen it. It's a slide that has a picture of this, this bowl of blood, bright red blood, and coming up out of the bowl of blood with a man, you can't see his face, standing behind it, lifting up a beautiful white robe out of the blood. The robe is coming out of the blood, dazzling white and beautiful. Those who have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. Jesus is the Passover Lamb. And in our text for this evening, he says something amazing. On the day that he instituted the Last Supper, he tells his disciples, I have longed to eat this Passover with you. I have longed to eat this meal with you, but I will not eat of it again until it finds its fulfillment in the kingdom of God. 1,491 years before Jesus came and 33 years of His life on earth, for all those years of holding the Passover celebration each and every year, what it truly and always meant, what it was always about, finds its fulfillment when Jesus institutes the Last Supper and when he dies on the cross and is raised to life again for our sins. Everything that the Lamb of God was always about, everything it always pointed to, everything God is doing for us through him finds its fulfillment in this supper and what we receive when we too feast 
not on some animal, not on some symbolic creature that pointed ahead to the reality of what it was meant to show, but on the true flesh and blood of the Lamb of God Himself. And when the Lamb calls us forth to His table and feeds us with His very body and blood, He is giving us everything the Lamb of God always intended to give His people. Everything God's plan of salvation always called for. He is giving us in His blood and in His flesh forgiveness, life, and salvation. Not symbolically, not something that points to something else, but truly and completely the tree of life is open again. When Jesus invites us to his table, he's given us access to the tree of life as a foretaste of what we will feast on in heaven forever when he takes us home to be with him. Dear friends, that's what the Lamb of God's all about. That's why Lamb of God imagery is all over. That's why there's a lamb on the back window of our church, a beautiful stained glass window. That's why we have all these hymns where we sing about the Lamb of God. That's why the Agnes Day is part of our liturgy. That's why Jesus is the Lamb of God. When you come forward this evening, on this night when we thank the Lord for establishing, for giving us this sacrament, the fulfillment of all that the Passover always was, Know what you are truly receiving. And I pray, as you receive it, you will have joy in your heart and you'll hear somewhere in your heart and your soul the words of John the Baptist telling you, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world for you. Amen. And now may the peace passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds forever in Christ Jesus, the Passover Lamb of God.